Hello, I'm Ken. And so today I'll be taking you guys through some applications of ultrasound for joints. So as um, as William kind of covered uh, more in detail, uh, why is ultrasound so beneficial in the clinical setting? Well, some of the reasons, you know, it's non-invasive, there's uh, no radiation, uh, ability to scan and view images in real time. Uh, it can be used uh, also as a first step before any other types of scans. And it can not only diagnose certain findings, but it can also be used as a guide for procedures such as uh, with inserting needle needles. And um, specifically for joints, ultrasound is useful as it has high resolution on the more superficial or shallow structures and the soft tissue around the joints uh, can be clearly viewed. It doesn't really show the structures inside the joints though, so that's when uh, the MRI is mainly used. And then some abnormalities I'll be mentioning that ultrasound can detect at joints include effusions, uh, synovial hypertrophy, bone fractures, crystal deposits, and uh, ligament or cartilage pathology. I'll be mainly focusing on just the knee joint and the process of scanning for joint diffusion and leading to the potential arthrocentesis. So the synovial membrane is composed of thin connective tissue that lines a joint cavity and is responsible for secreting synovial fluid, which uh, lubricates and nourishes the joint. Joint diffusion is when uh, extra fluid floods the joint cavity, and this could be due to various causes, uh, including uh, arthritis and bone fracture, which I'll show. And arthrocentesis is a procedure that is performed to obtain synovial fluid from within a, a joint capsule, both for diagnostic and therapeutic purposes. So here's the anatomy up here of the knee joint from the side view. Uh, this is towards the head on the side, and this is towards the feet. Over here, we can see the femur, and down here is the tibia, and up here is the patella. Above is the quadriceps tendon, and below is the patellar tendon. You can also see, see the major fat pads around here and the synovial membrane that extends through the joint and also goes superiorly. Here's an anterior view. Here's a patella in the middle again, and the quadriceps tendon up above, and the patellar tendon. Well, most of the ultrasound scans that I'll be showing will just be in this kind of longitudinal view. So setting up the patient, uh, the patient would be supine, and you also place something such as a towel or cloth beneath their knee to raise it uh, and create a 30-degree flexion at the knee. Uh, these are the areas that you would want to um, that you would want to uh, put the indicator or the probe, and then the indicator will also be pointing upwards. And uh, you start with the longitudinal view, and then we can start identifying some structures. So here, underneath the uh, quadriceps tendon, we can see the femur, and then below it, we can see the patella and then the patellar tendon again, and then here's the tibia down here. Um, in this one, we can see the anechoic area in between the quadriceps and the femur, which could indicate an effusion. Uh, other parts of this ultrasound scan uh, it would be subcutaneous uh, fat, and then there's also the prefemoral fat pad over here, and then over here is the patella and the acoustic shadow. So non-traumatic joint effusion is most commonly anechoic throughout, but when an intraarticular fraction occurs, uh, blood and fat are able to escape into the joint, and this effusion is termed uh, lipohemarthrosis, or arthrosis, and fat is echogenic on ultrasound and can be seen here lying above the relatively anechoic layer. Uh, the diagnosis of a fracture can also be uh, confirmed through the visible fracture of the tibia right here, also seen with ultrasound. So to confirm the possibility of an effusion, we also want to scan in the transverse view, fan, sweep throughout the area, and also compare with the other side. Another way to confirm an effusion is also to compress the anechoic area. 
compression of the anechoic area would indicate that the fluid is indeed, uh, or that the space is indeed filled with fluid and not just uh, synovial hypertrophy or any other artifact. It also mentioned before ultrasound can not only be used as a diagnose, diagnostic tool, but also as a guide. Uh, using ultrasound, we can quickly determine whether medial or lateral will be better for arthrocentesis, depending on the amount of fluid. And as shown here, the probe is used to visualize the needle uh, as it is inserted to remove the fluid. The, the needle can either be inserted right next to the probe and you can see it go down through the layers or you can measure down to where the anechoic area is and you can insert the needle from the side over there. The same can also be done for steroid injections that are given to reduce inflammation and compared to blind injections, uh, ultrasound guided injections uh, logically increase the success rate due to the ability to actually see where the needle is inserting. And additional ultrasounding imaging that I could understand uh, include uh, detections of crystal deposits and ligament pathology. So gout is the most common cause of inflammation in men, and it is associated with uh, the accumulation of uric acid in the body. Ultrasound is able to just detect these crystal deposits that accumulate within the joints. The double contour sign uh, seen through the two parallel hyperechoic contours indicate uh, the crystal deposits. The deeper contour here uh, shows a femoral co cortex and right above is this uh, hyaline cartilage. And then the more superficial hyperechoic contour represents the uric acid that's accumulating on the surface of the hyaline cartilage. Ligament visual visualization within the knee is limited. However, certain ligaments such as the MCL and LCL can be visualized using ultrasound, although the PCL and ACL cannot. Uh, here's an image of the normal MCL. Up here's the femur again, and down here's the tibia with the MCL crossing over. And ligaments will show up similar looking to tendons, but just a little bit more hyperechoic. On this image, we can see the MCL tear down here on the distal end with the disruption of the tissue. And then also here we can see the femur, femur and tibia with the meniscus with uh, in between. You can see the fusion also over here because of the displacement of the meniscus. And there's also cysts present in the meniscus that you can see. Uh, certain zones of the meniscus are not visible to ultrasound, but we can see parts of what is being affected. So there are many more pathologies that ultrasound can detect within the knee and other joints, but showing just how useful ultrasound can be in the diagnostic and procedural process. Thanks.